Okay. Um, my wife is not here, so uh, the two kids is a little bit noisy. So you just uh, bear with me with that. So in the book of Job, Job is considered as the oldest book in the Bible. It's even older than Genesis. Uh, if, at the time is different, the time uh, that record, Genesis, of course, record about the creation. So, but the time is written. Uh, Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, Deuteronomy, these five books was written by Moses and so it's uh, but the but the book of Job they consider is older than that okay older than that even older like in time of uh, Abraham older than that okay Job chapter 1 there was a man in the lands of Uz whose name was Job and that man was perfect and upright and one that feareth God and eschewed evil. So these are the testimony of God, uh, testimony of Job, that everybody knows, even his friend knows, he's perfect, upright, fear God, and eschews evil. And there were born unto him seven sons and three daughters. His substances also was 7,000 sheep, and 3,000 camels, 500 yoke of oxen, and 500 she asses, a very great household, so that this man was the greatest of all the men of the East. So it's very old, 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 old. Now, again, we remember Job was not a Hebrew, okay? Job was not in Hebrew, okay, so it's not uh, even that country of Israel was not uh, not made yet. It's not even an Israelite. So uh, but yet God already revealed himself in the time of old in in very old time. One of the questions I uh, I ask it, uh, I do not know if you ask it that, uh Moses wrote about uh the generate uh the, the creation Moses wrote about uh the conversation between God and Adam between Adam and Eve and that time Moses was not born yet of course how can Moses know the detail uh, the story of uh of uh, Adam and Eve and the story of the creation, realizing that Moses only grown up in Egypt. Okay, so is it possible that Moses learned from someone who taught Moses uh, the knowledge uh, of God? Who taught Moses the knowledge of God? He was uh he grown up uh in in the palace. For uh, forty years, and uh, who taught him? Of course, his mother only taught him when he was uh be before he win. But after he win, he was in the uh palace, and uh, uh when he fought another forty years after he run out of Egypt, he in the priest uh outside of of Egypt, he in the uh, wilderness in the land of Medians and he marries to the daughter of the priest. And uh, it's also another question is whose priest is the father-in-law of Moses? Is that the priest of the Lord, the true God, or the priest of uh, the false God? So there are many, uh, you know, possibilities uh, and then where did Moses get the idea uh, of the creation? So it, in the time of past, there has been existed uh, many secrets of the Lord that uh, even this time we just accept it, but we cannot 
totally understand how really the word of the Lord come to human being. We just know that is in the book of Hebrews is that it's it's not by the private interpretation, but it is by the holy man of God as a move by the uh, Holy Spirit. It was the Holy Spirit who moved them, uh, their hand and writing on these. Maybe God talked to them by vision, by dreams, we do not know. Okay, so a Job is one of the secret story uh, in the Bible, which is uh, not concerning about the Jews. Uh, the rest of the Bible from Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, and to all the re revelations, all the books mentions about the Jews. Right, the Jewish people, right? Queen Esther, Ezra, all of those books are talking about the Jews. But Job is the only book in the Bible that is not mentioned about the Jews. Near the Abrahams, near the any Israelites here. Okay, so now we are studying the book of Job. It considered as a Gentile book. <laughs> okay. Despite of the fact it is the oldest book in the Bible, uh, that's why the Israelites and the Jews was not mentioned, but why it was put not in the beginning, before Genesis, why it's put uh, uh, before Sam, okay, Job, Sam, Proverbs, I do not know why, I do not know. Okay, now we just continue, it's just uh, an overview um, of the, the, the book of Job. And in this book of Job, it will tell us uh, things that many Christians nowadays, they think wrong. Uh, number one, about Satan. Does really Satan, when they see God, they will run away? He will run away. That is point number one, okay? Point number two, is that really uh, follow God and then you will not suffer problems and trials? Many others believe that's all. Oh, Satan, when he see God, he will flee away, he will afraid and tremble. And many say that uh, when you believe God, everything will be smooth, everything will be okay. But the book of Job tell us differently. So now we, we go to introductions of Job. He's upright man and he's very rich, right? The richest man in the East. Seven sons and three daughters. Wow, that is 10 children. And his sons went uh, a feasted in their houses and everyone his day. Wow. And his son went feasted in their houses, everyone his day. What does it mean here in Vietnamese? Wow. So, every Everyone in his day. So uh, today you have a feast in my house. So they come and eat. Another day is get to go and feast in my house and come and eat. So uh, it seems to say that Job is a righteous man. Okay. Job was a righteous man. The one that it used evil, do good. But it did not appear that their children are fearing God. It did not appear that their children obey God, okay? They feasted every day, this house, and then the next day, another house, the aunt and Italy. They sent and called their three sisters to eat and to drink with them. See? So, after, look at this, after it, uh, it was so, when the days of their feasting were gone about, Job sent and sanctified them and rose up early in the morning and offered burnt offering according to the number of them all. For Job said, it may be that my son have sinned and cursed God in their hearts. First, Job did it continually. So we can see that the characters over here, Job care for them. But look at this. Job think. Job think that their sons have cursed God in their heart. 
So Job is not confident about the spiritual growth of his children, right? We can see that. And he thinks that they, they sinned. And he thinks that they cursed God in their heart. And then they, even they afraid Job, they did not show it. They did not show it by um by by their face, but in their heart, they're doing so. Right? By and every time that they have fist, every time that they enjoy their fist, Job called them, sanctified them, and offered unto the Lord. Okay, burnt offering unto the Lord. So it's appear to say that. Job is a man that feared God, but his children were not so. Okay, his children were just, you know, fear Job, but the, did not fear God. So, the, uh, nevertheless, Job was very rich. Okay, so that is the story of Job, the story on earth, on heaven. Now, there was a day when the sons of God came to present themselves before God and Satan came also among them. The word Satan in Hebrew was, is the uh, adversary. Okay? So now there was the sons of God. Sons of God refer to the angels. Okay? The angels are uh, the first creature before God created heaven and earth, before God created human. God already created innumerable angels. How many of them? Only God knows. We only say innumerable. And Satan is one of them. So there was a time that all the angels, the angels present themselves before the Lord. And Satan also came among them. We do not know what is the purpose. Maybe they came to sing praises. Maybe they came to report what they're doing. Maybe we, we do not know their purpose. But we know that Satan also among these angels came and presents before the Lord. Okay, so uh, there's no fear that Satan, that Satan afraid that Satan go away from God. No, Satan came and present himself before the Lord. Now, so when it used the word Satan, the adversary uh, means to say that uh, he already, you know, fallen angel. He already committed sin, right? He already committed sin. He already um, proud. He already want to set his 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 throne. Before the North Star uh, above, before, the, before, you know, he will be like the most like God. Okay? So, because it's used with Satan. So, this time he's already a fallen angel. But it's not like in the, uh, there's no way in the Bible, it's look like cartoon that Satan uh, this time was so beautiful and after the fallen he turned to red and he cut uh, his wing were cut and he had the tail and he had the fork etc there's nowhere to show that one in the bible okay so it's only mentioned about a red dragon in the new testament book of revelation but it's not doesn't look like the satan that you can see on uh, the uh, Internet, okay. Where is that? Where is the internet? Uh, say that look, okay. So, uh, what's it look like? Okay, it's look like this. Okay, it's look like a goat. It's so ugly. There's nowhere in the Bible you can find and describe Satan. Uh, it's like this or like that. Okay, this is just a product of human imagination. Okay, so clearly the Bible said that Satan also among all the angels came and present themselves uh, before the Lord. And the Lord said unto Satan, Whence comest thou? Then Satan answered the Lord and said, 
from going to and fro in the earth, from walking up and down in it. Uh, why did the Lord ask Satan when comes down? Of course, the Lord know it. The Lord knows Satan what he's doing. He knows what Satan going up and down, uh, doing everything. He knows it. Why did the Lord ask Satan to do so, to, to answer it? Okay. Uh, you know, it's just like, um, what is that word in, uh, in, in English? Rhetorical questions? The question that no need to answer, what's that question? The question, the purpose of asking is for confirmation. He knows it, but he just wants to confirm it. Okay? Example like, uh, you know that your, your, your kid was telling a lie. Uh, your kid is, uh, you know that your kid uh, destroying that uh, vase. Return it for me. If you destroy, you will have spunking. Return it. Okay, so I'm sorry. My wife is not here, so I have to keep the two kids. Uh, where is it now? Uh, we go back. So, you know that your kid was the one that uh, broke the vase. But you're still asking. Did, were you the one that broke the vase? Did you break the vase? Okay. You just want them to confess their sins, you know, to accept their sins. That is a question that actually you know the answer already. You just want a confirmation. Sometimes the Lord appear like that. Like a Lord, the Lord appear to Adam and ask, Adam, where are thou? Like that. Adam, God knows, but God still asks the confirmation. So God asks Satan when Gwen's comes down. God wants to know Satan, uh, his uh, purpose, reminded him of his works, uh, reminded him of his purpose uh, in this life and his works that the Lord, the ministry has the Lord given to him. So Satan said, oh, I just go up and down, throw and bro, walking up and down in the earth. <laughs> okay. Satan did not answer what is his purpose. Okay. The purpose that the Lord created Satan. Nevertheless, the Lord asked Satan again, Has thou considered my servant Job? Is there none like him in the earth? A perfect and upright man, one that feared God and eschewed evil. So the Lord said to Satan about Job. The Lord was so, you know, so proud of Job, how he performed uh, uh, his character. And uh, the Lord say it to Satan. Okay. So uh, one of the questions we asked in the beginning is that if God knows everything will happen, God knows that Satan will, uh, you know, rebel against him. Why did God create Satan since the beginning? If God knows everything, okay, God knows everything before He created everything. He's He's all knowing God. He knows that Satan will betray Him. He will lift up his mind, pride. Will will you know? Will become falling angel. Will destroy human. But why God created Satan in the beginning? It is because of the pleasure and the glory of God. Okay, if you have a gold and if you put your gold in the darkness, it will never shine. But if you put the gold in the hot, in the heat of the sun or in the fire, the gold will really shine, really red, really shine. Okay, reflect. So, it's somehow like God created Satan so say, to, to, to prove to Satan, to prove to, to, to Satan and all the falling angels 
that God is a glorious God and is always in the winning side. And he's always has someone love him and worship him, free him with all the, his heart and his and, and his souls and his mind. So th that's maybe that's the purpose. You know, we are just like um um what's that a clay in the potter hand. We are just a pieces of chess that the master play. Okay. So Job has done his well, his his work very well, and the Lord was um proud of him and uh, tell Satan, Satan, you look. Do you consider my servant Job? Do you see it? Oh, you see how he loved me? None body like him. He's so perfect. He's upright. He fear me. I choose evil. You know, I eschew evil means restrain from evil. And Satan did not give up. Satan gave a test to the Lord. Satan said that, Satan answered the Lord and said, Does Job fear God for naught? Isn't Job fear God for nothing? Has not thou made a hedge? Hedge means offense about him and about his house and about all that he hath on every side. Has thou blessed his work of his hands and his substance is increased? In the land. So Satan know very, 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 very clearly that Job riches are from the Lord. The protection uh, of Job from the enemies, you know, in those times, uh, there's no law. The people just do what is right in their hand, their, their, their side. They fight, they kill each other, you know, you know, those times, right? In the time, same like in time of Noah. But yet, Satan knows that Job still keep his riches, thousands of sheep, of, 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 of ashes, of camels. No one attack uh, and get it. No one uh, attack it. No one get it because of God protected him. Okay? So, remember this. Christian... Sometimes we do not know why we are rich. But remember, it is the Lord who protected us. And Satan knows very well that it is the Lord who protect and give us this health, this house, this cars, these properties, and these riches, these ministries, etc. This was the Lord. And Satan tempted the Lord. Satan told God that Lord, God, put for thy hand now. Means remove your hand and touch all that he had, and he will curse thee to thy face. Okay? So Satan said that Job uh loved God. Just because of the riches. Satan loved God. Uh, Job loved God just because uh, everything is well with him. Satan said that Job loved God just because he has wife, he has ten children, he has servants. Everything is so good with him. Everything so well. He have in good condition, good health, good family. Satan... Satan said Job loved God just because of this blessing. So he told God, Lord, you remove your hand. And Job will curse you. Or oh, see, to your face. Imagine that. Job will curse you to your face. Wow. So what happened? The Lord accept the challenge of Satan. Satan, the Lord said to Satan, Behold, all that he hath is in thy power, and upon himself put not forth thy hand. 
So Satan went forth from the presence of the Lord. The challenge be accepted. Okay. We can see that between God and Satan, there's a challenge. God put his trust in Job. Put his name in Job. Imagine that. And Satan wants to use Job to curse God. Remember, Satan cannot curse God. Okay? He's not there to curse God. But he wanted to use Job to curse God. Again, Satan cannot praise God. Okay? There's nowhere in the Bible Satan praise God. Oh, mighty God, you live forever. All power belongs to thee. Right, There's nowhere in the Bible that Satan praise God. But human Job can praise God. And God used Job to praise him, to challenge Satan. So God created angels, God created humans, all of all his glory. We are the tools of righteousness, the tools of God being created to praise him in all situations. Remember, every time we give up upon God, Satan is laughing. Every time we give up upon the Lord, Satan is laughing. Every time every Christian is backslide, mocking God, okay, that is very, very bad. Of course, in the beginning, it's not Christian, but those is the purpose of Satan. Let us, we'll face the problems. I do not know what is happening right now. Maybe in heaven. Uh, the Bible said in the book of Revelations, your adversaries day and night stand near by the Lord and uh, accusing you. Accusing you in front of the Lord. So, whatsoever challenges that that the Lord has put Satan into, uh, you know, allow Satan to, to, to test us, to try us. Remember, the Lord has a purpose. The Lord wants to use the circumstances that we can praise him. Because Satan cannot praise him, but we can praise him. And remember, another one that, there is no praising of God in the in the grave. So, if God is is trying you, testing you, God will not put the testing that over that you cannot bear. But He always open a door for us to 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 overcome it. And next time we will see how. Is the testing of the Lord upon Job. And uh, you continue to read on. And you can see their story. And you will see also. The hardest testing. Is not of the material thing. But is from the wife. And the friends. And we will consider their words. In the next meeting. Let's pray. Gracious mighty Father, thank you dear Lord for uh, the Bible study that we study in book of Job in chapter 1 verses 1 to 12. And I pray dear Father that you will uh, help each one of us. We know our purpose. You created us not because for we to enjoy. Not because for we to, you know, uh, to put a human as a center of the world. But we are just a tool of righteousness because in this world, only human can sing and only human can praise us unto you. Satan cannot praise you. All the, the, the plans, they can, 
they cannot sing to you, Lord, but we can. And you created us for the purpose of praising, fearing the Lord, I choose evil, do what is righteous. And Lord, thank you, Father, for this privilege. Through the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ, we once again can sing praises unto you and glorify your name. Help us, Father, whatsoever situation that we will face, help us to overcome and glorify your name. Let not Satan uh, have a chance to mock you. Let not Satan have a chance to bl blaspheme in your name. Let us, Father, to give glory and honor to you all the time. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. Goodbye and good night, Bob.